Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we are going to check out another brand new beast of the Mesozoic figure. This time we have another Ceratopsian series release, as we have the old buck version of the Styracosaurus. And not only do we have that version, we also have the bloody version, because there are actually two different variants of this. There's the kind of normal version, and then there's this version, which is a little bit more, you know, beat up and bloody, and looking really cool, and I'm definitely psyched about this. If you are unfamiliar with what the old Buck Styracosaurus is, it is basically a color scheme that was influenced from the old Buck Dinosaurus series animated short film from Dead Sound. And uh, that's a really cool short film, so it's really neat to actually have a Styracosaurus that was inspired from that color scheme of that Styracosaurus. And not only that color scheme, as we obviously have, again, the bloody, you know, half-like, broken off horn version as well and you can see that the packaging looks really nice again pretty much your standard when it comes to the ceratopsian series we've got an awesome shot here of the styracosaurus and it even has that kind of animated sort of a look to it pretty much exactly as it does in the short film and then over here you can see a sneak peek of the styracosaurus itself there kind of hiding within the window area and then if we turn it around here to the back you can basically see the other versions of the fans choice ceratopsians all of which i've actually reviewed already as we have the Pachyrhinosaurus, we also have the Medusaceratops, and then there's the Taurosaurus, and now we have the Old Buck version of the Styracosaurus, and I will actually have the standard version of the Old Buck Styracosaurus as well at some point, very, very soon I would imagine, to review for you guys. But also over here you can see again kind of a sneak peek of the collectible card and the information and everything like that. So, let's pop this box open and check it out. So first of all, as we dive into this a little further, you can see the inside, that insert into the box looks awesome. We pretty much have an entire kind of uh, an image here that is a perfect display companion piece to the Styracosaurus, kind of taking you into that short film, which is an awesome addition to this release. And then, as always, you have the tail assembly instructions, something that's very important to pay attention to. Sometimes you have more assembly than the tail when you have, like, the Tyrannosaurus series and you can switch out the legs and stuff, but for the Ceratopsians, it's only the tail that you really need to worry about, so something you definitely need, again, to pay attention to so you don't break the figure. And then we have the card and you can see that the card looks really nice again pretty much that same image that we had seen on the front of the box for the styracosaurus and also kind of the same image sort of as to what we see there on the insert for the inside of the box and then here on the back you can again see the beasts of the mesozoic logo a nice image of the styracosaurus as well as the information on the species throughout the course of the remaining area of the card so this is definitely going to be a really cool one because here is our Styracosaurus and look at how gorgeous that is. That is absolutely breathtaking, honestly. The coloration just looks so good. And even though I really do quite like that short film, I wouldn't consider myself any sort of like a fanboy where this is going to, you know, be an instant like for me because I, you know, love the short film so much. I just think that this coloration looks really good on the Styracosaurus, and David really did a great job on this one specifically. It's another beautiful version of the Styracosaurus. I really was a big fan of the first version. Definitely love this one, and I also love the fact that he actually went through the trouble of re-sculpting, you know, a little bit of the figure when it comes to the horns and stuff to give it a more screen accurate appearance to what we see on the old buck version of the Styracosaurus in that short film. So... Let's go ahead and jump straight to a closer look at this beauty right now. So the large majority of the figure is going to remain the same compared to what the older one had going on when it comes to the sculpt. So we don't need to go very thoroughly over the entire sculpt, but we do need to definitely look at, of course, the paint job, but also the differences between the sculpt. So straight away, you can see here in the face, we have quite a few different variations of color as we have a nice darker gray for the large majority of the upper part of the head you have a nice lighter gray here for the lower jaw really nice lighter gray for the beak as well and you could see some kind of like very dark grayish stripes and kind of designs there through the beak itself and then as you move up here you can kind of see more of that i don't know if you would consider it a dark gray or a black at this point yeah looking at it i would definitely say it's more of a black here 
on the upper part of the snout. But you can see it kind of stripes and designs down pretty much all over the place. You can see a little more light gray picking up, some more black kind of spotting along the lower jaw. And then, oh, actually, I should say the upper jaw, but bordering on the lower jaw. And you can see more of that actually right here. But as you lead up here, you also start to see some of the slices, the wounds and stuff. Now, they, of course, are not actually sculpted into the model. They're just basically, you know, slices of uh, bloody paint that, you know, insinuate that injury type of a look. And then you also have more of the light gray here, a little bit more back here. You can see it kind of just popping up all over the place. The eye is also painted really nicely. You can see a nice white and a black, and it has a gorgeous gloss coat on it the reddish coloration again for the injuries also has a slight glossy look to it so it gives it kind of again that bloody look a little bit better the coloration throughout all of the actual paint application looks really good to me really nice and naturally applied you can see the spike right here is painted with a nice glossy black as you move up here into the frill you continue to see the spikes painted with that same coloration again that nice blackish tone and then as you move up you begin to get that kind of white striping running along the horns here which is exactly what you see on the old buck version of the Styracosaurus in that short film. But one thing that does differentiate this one from the original Styracosaurus is the positioning of the horns. It's a little bit different for this one compared to the original one. Again, more so replicating the old buck from the short film. And you will, of course, see the differences when I bring in the original release of the Styracosaurus here in a little bit. As you lead up into the frill, you can start to see the design here in the frill. Again, really cool with some reds and whites, and you also have some blacks and stuff. Again, very nicely replicating the old Buck's Styracosaurus. You can also see that we have more of those light grays moving through, kind of giving it that scarred up kind of a look, which is something that, again, is seen on this particular version of the Styracosaurus. And you can see, again, pretty much the same thing over here. You can kind of see more of those, you know, sort of scars and stuff up here in the frill. And then moving down here toward the snout, you see more of it. And you also, again, see the same style of coloration compared to what we had just seen on the initial side. It all looks really good, really nice and natural. Beautiful application of the paint, honestly. You can, again, see the eye with that really nice gloss coat. And as you move up here into the horn, this is another area where we have a horn that differs from the original Styracosaurus release. As we have a black for the coloration of the horn, but then you have some more of that kind darker gray leading up and striping through and then that transitions slightly to kind of like a whitish tone before transitioning to a reddish tone leading up here into the broken well if my camera would focus on it the broken horn and you can actually see here oh wow my camera is really not wanting to focus on this there we go you can see that the inside of the horn is painted out and everything where it's broken to kind of show off that broken aspect to the horn and it looks super super cool definitely a really nice touch to have both the you know the kind of standard healthier looking version and then the beaten and bloodied and of course broken horn version of the old buck styracosaurus of course the jaw articulates because it's a beast of the mesozoic figure we have tons of articulation you can see the teeth painted in there a very very nice dark very dark reddish tone for the inside of the mouth there's the tongue hiding in there you can also see the teeth on the upper side of the inside of the mouth are painted as well again the tongue should articulate if i can get my finger in there yeah, I can't, my finger's too big to get in there, but the tongue does articulate normally on these ceratopsians as well, and the jaw actually works really nicely. You can see straight out of the box, sometimes they're a little stiff. This one wasn't, though, which is nice to see. As you move back here into the neck region, you start to have more of that black running along the upper side. You also have more of that white striping as well as more injuries. You can see it's pretty much coated in slices all over the place, which is something, again, that you do see on this particular version of the Styracosaurus in that short film. You also have the grayish tone moving back, and then a lighter gray running here along the underside of the Styracosaurus. And you can see more of the darker grays moving down and kind of striping down in a few spots. As as you continue to move back you continue to see that same kind of color scheme moving back here with the darker tone moving along the top the white kind of striping and designing through and of course the usage of a black and then a white striping through is just insanely appealing looking because they play off of each other so nicely and again just they make each other stand out in the absolute most perfect way. So that striping is about as flashy as it gets when it comes to a dinosaur like this, but also I would say very natural looking overall. 
But as you continue to move down here toward the stomach, you see more of the black kind of spotting here through. You go back to that grayish tone here. You can see more, again, injuries moving through with that kind of a reddish tone there that has a slight kind of a hint of a gloss look to it. And then you have more of the white striping down here into the side. You start to pick up on more of those lighter grays. Again, those kind of like stripes and stuff and designs of the lighter gray. You see a few more of the spots here of the lighter gray as well. And then as you move down, you have another brief area of the black and it kind of leaks down into the lighter gray of the underside of the Styracosaurus. You have a few more black spots up here as you move down into the leg of the Styracosaurus. And they've given the leg a really nice dark wash. So it really makes the detail pop down there quite nicely, which I really like. We have a light gray for the nails. The nails also have a nice gloss coat. You can really see that dark wash down there as well. And then as you move back up here, you can see the black kind of lead down and almost overtake the entire hip region. And you can also see it kind of spot in in uh, quite a bit of the area here of the thigh moving down. And yet again, you can see how we have that nice dark wash on this leg as well, making sure we highlight all of that incredible scale detail moving down. Again, the very nice grayish tone for the nails with that nice gloss coat. And then as you move out here into the tail, you continue to see that black moving along the top, but the white stripes disappear as we lead out into the tail. You can see some more black spotting. You can also see a stripe that kind of runs along the tail here as it all kind of meets up out here at the tip. And then the lighter gray here for the underside. And you pretty much only have the lighter gray here down on the underneath of the dinosaur moving through the majority of the figure and then you're going to see pretty much the same thing over here but of course you know injuries and scars and things like that would be painted out a bit differently compared to what we see through the rest of the figure because of course it's not going to have exactly the same injuries and scars on each side so Again, David did a really, really good job on this, especially just in general when it comes to kind of replicating the old Bucks Styracosaurus, the coloration of the old Bucks Styracosaurus, but also that kind of bloodied and beat up version of the Styracosaurus. Again, he really did capture it with, honestly, in my opinion, perfection. So really, really cool looking. Absolutely love this figure and I also love the fact that I now have the pleasure of being able to add an old buck Styracosaurus to my collection. Now of course the Styracosaurus does have the same articulation that we had on the original release again with the joint right here behind the head you can see it right there to move the neck around you know make quite a bit of different poses possible and you also have a spot right here and when they move together you can get some really really nice poses in the neck region of the Styracosaurus. You also of course have the articulated jaw as well as the tongue which we already mentioned as you move down here into the front leg you've got a spot of articulation right here and some are probably going to be stiff because again I didn't really move them right now yeah the elbow it does articulate it's not moving currently it's really stiff kind of move it a little bit as we try to swivel it it's wearing in a little but you also have the articulation of the wrist you can see you can like move it down move it up swivel it move it all over the place again really nice posability on these beasts of the Mesozoic figures. You also have the articulation of the midsection to give you some nice turns and stuff in the midsection of the Styracosaurus. And also it goes up and down to create all sorts of poses. As you move back, you also have articulation in the hip region. And then this one's most definitely going to be stiff. Oh, well, we got it a little bit. So there we go. We can move the knee. And then as you move down, let's try to straighten that back out. There we go. As you move down, you've got two areas of articulation down here in the ankle area, which again, gives you some more really nice posability for the figure. And then of course the tail is the final area, the final bit of articulation for this amazing Ceratopsian release. But as far as a size goes for a length, you are looking at about the foot long range. So about 12 inches or right around 30, maybe closing in a 30 and a half centimeters. And then the highest point would be the horns up here. I'd say around six inches, maybe slightly over or about the 15, 15 and a half centimeter mark. Now I absolutely twisted the camera in a way where it was crooked, but I don't feel like we really need to do any size comparisons or anything because the size of this is going to be pretty much exactly the same as the original Styracosaurus was, and we've already reviewed that. We've done a ton of comparisons with that one, but one comparison that I do want to, of course, make sure we cover would be a comparison with the original Styracosaurus, so let's bring that in. So there we go, we have the fans choice version of the Styracosaurus along with the original version 
the original release of the Styracosaurus here. And you can definitely see, again, size-wise, they are absolutely the same. Sculpt-wise, the majority of the figure absolutely the same. But one area that is definitely very different would be the horns. So straight away, you can see running along the frill area of the Styracosaurus, you can see pretty much all of the horns look different to me. Very different positioning, very different shape, very different appearance overall. So those horns are obviously re-sculpted completely. And then of course, when you move down into the nasal horn area, you can see again that the horn is very different from the original one to the newer one, of course, with a broken horn and stuff on it so obviously david went ahead and re-sculpted some aspects of the figure to give us a much more screen accurate version rather than just repainting the original version to give it that old buck look he went the extra mile to give it again the actual old buck look with the horns and everything matching very nicely to what we see in that short film so excellent work on the part of david to go you know that distance to make sure that we get an awesome new version of the styracosaurus so this brand new version of the beasts of the mesozoic ceratopsian series styracosaurus is absolutely awesome the old buck is a really iconic i would say at this point styracosaurus that was an incredibly popular short film that kind of spread like a wildfire throughout the internet and of course dinosaur fans all over the place you know really took a large amount of enjoyment in that short film it was very popular so to have a color scheme a fan's choice color scheme for that styracosaurus was cool enough definitely a really neat one that i personally would have loved to have owned but to have it actually you know re-sculpted in certain areas to really you know replicate that old buck styracosaurus is awesome pretty much i would say brilliant on the part of david to again go the extra mile to make sure that we get the really cool appearance that the old buck styracosaurus has perfectly and david has done a fantastic job of course on the original sculpt but when it comes to the new additions of the horns and stuff i think they as well look great the fine detail of the horns themselves looks really nice the positioning again replicates the styracosaurus perfectly from the short film and the addition on this one of the broken horn is awesome. You do again have a non-broken, non-beaten up version where it doesn't have like the blood and everything all over. It doesn't have the broken horn. You can purchase that one. I will have that one as well because I have to purchase everything when it comes to these beasts of the Mesozoic figures. I'm absolutely addicted to them. Again, you also have this version here which has the kind of bloodied and beaten up look and i think he's done a very good job on it honestly and uh the coloration is incredibly striking as a whole so that's also really nice and i think it looks really good and natural overall on the styracosaurus like i could see this being the coloration of a ceratops and even though it's insanely flashy it's not too flashy in my opinion where i don't think it could be possible to have a color that looks like this so that's definitely a plus as well especially since we don't know how dinosaurs looked when it comes to their coloration so i feel like this could you know potentially be a coloration that we would see on a styracosaurus and all of the paint application is applied really nicely and really smoothly overall very nice washes have been added especially in the legs and stuff but I think it's really cool the way that he's painted this one because a lot of the time you'll see so many different washes and so much dry brushing to really highlight the detail whereas this one even though you do see you know that kind of thing throughout certain areas you also kind of see the paint added in a way where it looks like it literally was just pulled straight from the short film he's also of course added in really nice elements of realism with the gloss coats on the eyes the nails the inside of the mouth all of that fun stuff and the injuries the kind of slices and everything throughout look really cool again it uh some people might have preferred to have had them actually sculpted in so you could see the injuries themselves but i don't think that that takes away from the figure at all and again the way that it's been painted up here to resemble the injuries looks like it came straight from the short film because that's kind of the way it appears in the film itself so as a whole again you have an amazing version of a beasts of the mesozoic styracosaurus but you also have an amazing version of the old buck styracosaurus combined into one sporting a gorgeous paint application a really really beautiful sculpt and some incredibly impressive articulation and that of course all equals out to a total win if you ask me so if you are interested in picking this up for yourself make sure you check the link in the description where i will include a link where you can go head on over and purchase yourself one of these awesome fans choice styracosaurus i do want to say a huge thank you to david silva for sending this one over a little bit early for me to check out you know review 
review for you guys, get you hyped up for its release as it obviously is just about to release right now. Hopefully, if you haven't already purchased or pre-ordered this Styracosaurus, you'll head on over there, grab it now, because you definitely don't want to miss out on this. It's honestly an incredible figure. So make sure you check those links. Go grab yourself this fantastic Styracosaurus. Again, thank you, David Silva, for sending this over a little bit early. And make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next review. Thanks for watching.